I'm Sherry and this is Gardening in the North and we are standing under one of my arch trellises and behind me we have Rapa Conte squash and so just come in a little closer and take a look at how amazing this is. Oh my gosh this one here is actually pulling it down to the ground. So the great thing about this particular squash is that this whole neck of the squash here is seedless. All the seeds grow into the bulb of the squash. The other great thing about this squash is that it is resistant to pests. So while all your other squash plants are being eaten alive by everything and anything, this is thriving. So if you have the opportunity or the space to grow this, I would highly recommend it. Now, for those of you that really like zucchini, then this is probably a great alternative to growing zucchini or an additional thing to grow. When you grab them or harvest them at eight, 12 to 18 inches long, you're harvesting them at a very tender age and so you can eat the skin and actually preserve it, cook it, eat it the way you would a regular zucchini. Now these ones here are obviously a lot longer than the 12 to 18 inches and you can actually see that some of the coloring is changing on some of these ones here. So what happens is when you don't harvest them to eat them like a zucchini, you can then leave them on the vine and harvest them and use them as a winter squash, very similar to a butternut squash. So what I'm going to do is leave all of these hanging. I'm going to let them all turn color like this one here. And then I'm going to cook them up and put them in my freezer. Um, some of them I'm going to do different canning recipes with and this is going to last us until next year. So let's take a look at the other arch trellis because I want to show you the tromboncinos, which are pretty much exactly the same as these ones, except that they look a little bit different this year. So let's take a look. So I should have brought my measuring tape to show you this one here. So I'm 5'4", and I'm guessing it's about six inches shorter than me. It's about six inches off the ground. So this one here is about four feet long right now, and it's continuing to grow. Same with this one here, and I'm just thinking if I lift it a little bit, it's pretty heavy. Like, I think this one here is easily 10 pounds. This one has to be more than that. And so you can see that I have some growing in here. They didn't actually make it outside of the trellis. And then we have another one here. If you look up here, you can see that there are so many more that are just starting. So these plants aren't done yet. They're going to continue to produce for me for a while yet. Here's a look at the Ruth Stout potato experiment patch. I can't believe how well these plants are still continuing to grow. None of them are dying off yet so that tells me that I still need to let them grow. I do see a few flowers in here still so we're just going to remove them the idea is that if you remove the flowers, then the actual potatoes will grow bigger as opposed to having smaller potatoes. In box number one, we have beets all along the edge of the box. So all 10 feet have beets. The beginning beets here are albino, and then we have some golden beets over there. So I thought we would just pull a couple of them to see how they're doing. Oh, look at this. So there's a white albino beet. It is a good size. And then in the middle of the bed, we have the onions. 
Now I did plant some scarlet runner beans because I thought that it would add some beauty to the arch trellis and it really has. These flowers can be seen from my bedroom window, which is so pretty when they're next to the Rapaconte vining leaves. And so we'll just take a look in here. So my basil looks like it's actually starting to go to seed. It's starting to flower. I try to get out here as much as I can. Um, I need to actually start harvesting a lot of stuff off of, out of these boxes. And so in here, you can see that this is the Malabar spinach. So it is actually coming along fairly nice. Over here, we have runner beans that are starting to take off. Celery, which really I haven't done a very good job with mounting it up so that the stalks grow really strong. I've just left it because I think it looks kind of pretty being fairly bushy like that. Again, this Thai basil really does need to have, or needs to be harvested. But I do try to come out here when I'm out here just to pull off some of the flowers, just to slow it down a little bit. So let's take a look at the other side. So I did plant some calendula. And again, you want to make sure that you're deadheading as much as you can. The more you deadhead your flowers, the better it is because they'll continue to produce more. So you just want to make sure whenever you're out near them that you're pulling off what you can. And so it looks like I actually threw in some green beans in here as well. It got to the point where I was actually throwing seeds of everything everywhere. And you can see that I have other green beans growing in here as well. <laughs> right in amongst the onions. You can see I have my onions growing in there. All right, and so next to the pretty calendula, we have more beets. So again, I did some, some more golden beets and then I did the deep bulls uh, red beet. And you can tell that by the pretty purple leaves, which we were harvesting a lot of this and putting it into our salads. In box number three, again, I have more beets. And I know there are a lot of people out there that aren't too fancy on beets. But I have to tell you, we absolutely love them. My favorite way of cooking a beet is actually roasting it in the oven or on the barbecue. And then we freeze them. So I'll do a huge batch of them and throw them into the freezer in dinner size portions and then we just pull them out throughout the winter months and warm them up and eat them. So this here really needs to be harvested. We have tons of beans in here that are going to go to waste if I don't get out here soon. So many. And then I'm just going to show you this side of the trellis. So all of this in here is the Malabar spinach and it is really taking off. It is a slow starter, but once it gets going, it really does grow fairly fast. Now this is a perennial in any zones, I believe six and higher. In my zone 5B, it's not. I will have to plant this again next year, but we're already starting to harvest a lot of these leaves. We take them inside. I slice them up fairly thin because the leaf doesn't really, the texture of it is a lot thicker than lettuce, but we like putting these in our salads, just an extra type of texture and flavor. And again, I have thrown green beans everywhere. And then we have the tromboncinos, which is, like I mentioned, roughly four feet. And it's just so magnificent. Like even here, like it's still growing new vines. The vines just continue to grow. Like this one here isn't even attached to the trellis. It's just growing out 
I can't believe it. And then here we have more of the runner beans. And so they're going to look pretty amazing once they start to actually grow out. Oh, and in here in box four, we also have a baby Pam pumpkin. And then here we have some nasturtium. Again, it's a bit embarrassing that I have let it get this far. Um, I just have been so busy. We have a sick chicken. We recently got uh, bees given to us. Um, I work full time, yada, 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 yada. Cry me a river. <laughs> Needless to say, we've been busy, and so I really do need to come out here before it starts pouring and harvest everything and anything that I can. And so look at the peppers on this paprika plant. This is just crazy at how many are in there. And then we have the habanadas. And then we have a surprise pepper. I'm not really sure what that is. <laughs> it doesn't have a tag. And then let's pull a carrot to see how they're doing. Now, I was just going to pull a carrot and earwig fell on me, which was quite nasty. So let's do it again. And look at these. They're doing really good. So in here I have tomatoes, various varieties of tomatoes. And most of the plants are about waist high. Um, but some of them, like these tomato legs, are extremely short. I'm not even sure that they've made it past my knees. So if you've seen my video where I actually planted my tomatoes, I had roughly a hundred plants that I needed to plant out. And I currently only have 70 planted. That's how many either died during the planting stage or died after I planted them. And so here are some Brad's Atomic Grapes. They're actually coming really well. I'm extremely shocked by how much or how many of these plants actually have tomatoes on them. And I'm beyond excited because there are a lot of varieties that I planted that I have never tried before. So this one here is Berry's Crazy Cherry. And so it looks like there's a bunch that are almost ready and you can see in the back there that I have some ripe ones that probably need to be brought in and put in the window before the pests get at them. And I'm just going to turn here. Here is my orange cherry and I can see that one of them has been eaten there. And then I have a Roma that looks like is ready but again look at the Roma. It is barely making it to the trellis. I'm lucky if that is 18 inches tall. So it's a little bit sad. But what I want to show you while I'm over here is this whole area here is actually one of my onion patches. Now I have a fence around it because I have puppies and the last thing I wanted those puppies to do was to pull out the onions and eat them. But if you can see way over here, there is a squash there, a, sp a spaghetti squash. And that plant actually is a volunteer. And you can see that it's growing outside the fence, around the fence, as well as it's coming out this side here. So I made the decision to leave it when I first saw it. And I'm so glad I did because it is growing amazingly that I want to show you are these beautiful purple tomatoes. I've never seen anything so gorgeous. Now these are a Sart Rollis, and I probably butchered that name, but 
I got them from Baker Creek and I can't wait to try them. Here is my black bean patch. Now you'll see that I have a lot of vining beans on here as well. They really do look like they could be scarlet runner beans until you actually look at the beans. So these beans here, the name of them I believe is Black Coat and I got them from Baker Creek as well. And the reason that I decided to grow these is because I'm going to be drying these beans out. You can use these beans as a kidney bean. So all the vining beans on this bamboo trellis that I have here are the black coat beans. And again, they're, they're used as kidney beans. All the bush beans that you can see down here are black beans. So I'm gonna dry everything, all the beans, and then once they're all dried, I'm actually gonna make black bean burgers out of them, throw them in the freezer, and throughout the winter when we just wanna have a barbecue because we're dying for summer, I'll pull some out. So again, I have another plant here that really does need to be pulled out. Pest got to it and it did not do very good. The one next to it, however, I planted it a couple weeks ago and it seems to be thriving. However, when you do second and third plantings of squash, you tend not to write anything down. You just come out here with your seed packages and you plant what you're planting. And so I don't remember what that is. Let's take a look at the onions. They're doing really well. And so all of these onions were grown from seed in my grow room. I transplanted them out here and throughout the season, I have been giving them haircuts. And you can just see all the layers that are on that onion. So I planted a few Delica squash plants this year. You can see that I have one here. There's another one up there. I have two more back there, but they didn't seem to grow beyond the size that they are. And so if I just show you here, like it's not even the size of my hand from fingertip to wrist. So they're really small. I think what I'm going to do is clean out some of the barrels I have and replant them this weekend. So here we have a cream of the crop squash, which is new to me. I've never grown these before, but they have the same shape as an acorn squash. And then we have another one in here. And let me see. Oh was the start of a yellow zucchini but it these plants might be done now i might have to pull them pull these out and restart and then we have our egyptian walking onions i mentioned earlier that we were gifted some bees and so this is the setup that we were given uh, by my husband's brother he actually moved to a new home and he wasn't able to take his bees with them so he graciously offered them to us which we gladly accepted you can see that there is a lot of action going in here right now i'm standing fairly far away probably about 30 feet away because this hive right here um, the bees that are in that one are somewhat angry <laughs> We actually did a beehive inspection for our first time a few weeks ago and the bees in that hive actually followed me about a hundred feet away. So I'm just keeping my distance right now since I don't have any bee, bee gear on. Jaxie! Jaxie! <laughs> this is Jax and Lily. Two little puppies. Jaxie is six months old and Lily is four months old and they keep us very busy. 
Now you'll see that we have flags all along the border here. That is our electric dog fence. And so we're currently training Lily on it. She doesn't seem to like it too much, um, but we're doing our best. It just keeps them out of the areas where we don't want them as well as from leaving the property. So this here, this big jungle is our raised bed garden. And so I've mentioned before that this was the original raised bed garden. We've added four, four or five new beds to it over the last couple years. Um, and every year I try to plant things in a different way. So this year you can see all of the flowers that are up in here. Those are my zinnias and they have just taken off like crazy. Last year I did a lot of sunflowers in this bed or in this garden. This year I decided to do some zinnias. I have some dahlias. The other thing that I did differently is I did um, some purple, I think they're called long purple eggplant. And so those plants are really just beautiful. They have the nice big green leaves with the purple vining on them or veining, purple veins. The stems are purple, they're so gorgeous. And then I'll just show you down here. There's a eggplant now. So again, I have to come out here and really start harvesting what this garden is providing me. So this mass or this jungle right here is a ground cherry. Now I tried so hard last year to grow a ground cherry plant and they were all eaten by pests. This year I planted a little, well, a few more and they have really taken off. And so there's another one right here. And then we have a smaller one down here. And so I just wanna walk around this area. Again, I really wanna show the beautiful, you know, the, the gorgeousness of the garden, but I also wanna show you where things haven't gone very good. And so this whole trellis here really was not utilized this year. Everything that I planted on, on it, so I planted a whole bunch along the side here in the hopes that it would all grow up and it really didn't. The pest got, got at everything. And so this trellis here was not utilized in the way it should have been. So I want to show you this here. This is a new squash to me. It's called Boston Morrow and it is amazing. It is very similar to the tromboncino and the romponcante in terms of not allowing pests to destroy it. And of all of my squash plants, this one here is doing the best. Now, I just wanna show you <laughs> the biggest Boston Morrow squash I have. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put my shoe on top. So my shoe is, and this is a little bit embarrassing, but it is a size nine flip flop. And look at that. Like that's how big it is. This is crazy. And so there's another one down here. I showed you that first one. And then here's another one. <laughs> this here is the pool fence garden. And so I did plant some tomato plants all along the pool fence. You'll see that I do have a squash plant in there, which was a volunteer and I decided to leave it because listen, you can never have enough squash. <laughs> no, Jaxie, you can't have the carrot. Nope. That's Nanny's carrot. No, you can't have it. You want to say hi to our friends? Hi friends. <laughs> Here, you can have it. Never pick a carrot when you have your puppies around because they think that it's a treat for them. So here we have another volunteer squash plant. Again, I don't know what kind it is. Lily, go get it. 
Go get the carrot. <laughs> so that brings us to an end of the July 2021 garden tour. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you will come back for the next one. Thanks for spending your time with me.